All right, so it's nice and early here. Really warm morning. We've been having record heat in South Louisiana. In fact, we set record highs for the last five days. I think we're supposed to set another one today. I'm idling through a no-wake zone on the river near my house. I'm gonna see if I can catch some big bass today. Pre-fishing for a tournament that I got this weekend. We got a little bit of rain a couple days ago, so that may have muddied the river up a little bit. But with this warm weather, I'm expecting those bass to have pulled up to the shallows, be up on the beds. So it could be really good today. Really good for this river. This river is not very productive. It's a tough fishery. But I really like the challenge of fishing out here. I'm gonna try a variety of baits today and see what I can put together in hopes of getting a nice sack for the tournament this weekend. All right, so I'm gonna start with this chartreuse and white spinner bait, double Colorado, gold and silver. And I got a white matrix craw trailer on it. I'm almost gonna fish it like a jig, just sl slow rolling it along the bottom. It's always hard for me to get in the mindset of slow rolling a spinner bait. It's deadly effective this time of year, but it's always fishing too fast. I don't know if the fish are gonna be biting, but the mosquitoes definitely are. Oh, I got hit. Dang. He hit me twice. So chunking and winding a spinnerbait is definitely not my favorite way to fish. <laughs> it can be very, very effective. And I certainly enjoy it when they're smashing it. But I like to flip and pitch. That's what I really like to do. Hoping to find something on this spinner bait, get some reaction bites. But my flipping rod is calling my name, I'll tell you that. Fighting the urge to switch. The geese must be mating, they're going crazy. All right, while it's still early, I'm gonna make a quick pass in here with a pop bar. So I haven't caught a fish on top water yet this season, but the water temp's almost 72 degrees. You gotta figure they'll come up and hit a top water. But just not seeing a ton of surface activity, nothing to really give you confidence that it's happening yet. I'm getting close to flipping and pitching. I'm getting really close. Just think, if you don't have a lot of bait up on the surface, this bait just doesn't look natural. It looks too obnoxious. All right, I'm gonna make a move and put on my, what I want to fish anyway. Oh, man, that was a bite. It's probably a brim. Gotta be a brim. Two bites in a row in the same spot. Let's see if third time's a charm. Might be a goggle eye. There he is. He smacked it. There he is, there he is. Nope, just a little bass. That's not gonna help with the tournament. That's a Kentucky bass, spotted bass. Look at the orange eyes. Just a little dink, not gonna do us any good, but it was fun to catch. See you, buddy. All right, let's see if we get another one. Three bites in a row. Three casts, three bites. There he is. There he is. That's another one. Another little Kentucky. Also one that won't help. <laughs> a little bitty guy, man, he must be stacked up right there. Now, if this was tournament day, I'd move on, but they're fun to catch. I'm going to cast in there again. There he is. There he is. Three casts in a row. Another Kentucky. Three casts in a row. 
these boys are stacked up. Man, that wind's really picking up. It is howling. There he is. There he is. He's running with it. Oh, he missed it. The fish I'm putting in the boat are small. So you know they got some smaller ones mixed in with them. He just didn't get the hook. I know this isn't a productive use of my time, but it's a lot of fun. There he is. Now that's a large mouth. Now, believe it or not, that would be a tournament weigher. We can weigh in 11 inch fish. And I think he's I think he's at least 11, but you're not going to win with fish like that. There's a fish. Another little Kentucky. <laughs> not big, but fun to catch. Now he held that bait. For a while, I didn't want to set the hook with that boat passing, <laughs> but I finally had no choice. So a spot like this, I'll file in my memory bank. I've only caught one wayfish, but there's something that's causing these fish to hold right here. Some kind of way the current is pushing the bait or something. And so if I end up needing just one fish during the tournament, I'll come back here and see if I can catch a keeper. There he is. Oh, missed him. Missed him, missed him. He crushed it. These little Kentuckys are ferocious. If you've never caught one, if you don't have them where you fish, they don't get very big. They certainly don't get as big as largemouth bass, but they hit with attitude. There he is. Still got it? You still got it. There he is. Oh, they're getting smaller. <laughs> they're getting smaller. Man, this is fun. This is fun. They're not big fish, but they're a lot of fun. Now I've caught enough Kentuckys that I can look at them and see the, see the difference. But if you're unfamiliar with the fish, an easy way to tell it's a Kentucky is to rub your finger on its tongue. If it feels rough, it's almost definitely a Kentucky. Sometimes large mouths can have a rough tongue, but usually not. These fish are right on this ledge makes you think they're probably pushing bait against that ledge. I get my bites as soon as it falls off the drop off. Oh boy, I got smoked right under the boat and he felt me. Just as I was picking it up, I blew that. Probably 10 or 12 feet under the boat. So these fish have no idea I'm here. I'm not leaving till the bites quit. It's a major distraction, but I don't care, it's fun. Check everything around here before we move on. See if the school might have just moved just a hair. There's one. There he is. Yep, school moved over a little bit. Now that's actually a small largemouth. Just tell by how they look. Just look different. Plus, he's got the smooth tongue. You fish are not helping with my tournament prep. No self-discipline. So there's clearly a bunch of bait here. Otherwise, these fish would not be here. So where's the big boy? Where is he hiding out? A better question, where is she hiding out? The big girl, Big Bertha, my tournament fish. There, right under the boat. Another, <laughs> another largemouth. Look how pale that fish is. Water's not that dirty. Ooh, he got it in the gills. Hope he's gonna be okay. That fish could not have been more directly under the boat. But it seems like if I just drop straight down, I can't get a bite. I almost have to walk it down the ledge. Man, that wind is terrible. Glad I'm not in the marsh today. So I got an angel on one shoulder telling me to move on and continue scouting. But the devil's winning out. <laughs> I'm not leaving until the bites stop. Not happening. There's another one. That is a, what is that? That's a large mouth. A small large mouth, but a large mouth. 
<laughs> hey little guy, where's your big mama? Or even your big sister, I'll take her. So the fish I'm catching directly under the boat and that deeper water, all large mouths. If I get a bite up on the flat or right at the top of the ledge, it's a Kentucky. I wish I found a school of five pounders biting like this. Tick tock, tick tock. If you want me to stay at your party bash, you gotta show me something. All right, time to get back to work. Enough playing. Thanks for the fun, Bass. Going to find your older relatives. All right, I've come into this little backwater area. It's got some dirty water. Definitely dirtier than what I was fishing. So I'm gonna trade in my speed craw for, I think a sweet beaver. I'm trying to get some bigger fish. We have got to find some bigger fish. <laughs> Right now I've got, I think, one fish that would weigh for the tournament. Now it's only 9.30, so I got plenty of time left to scout, and our tournament's run until 1 p.m., so I gotta find something to at least get me excited about fishing Sunday. Now I really like this sweet beaver. It's a creature bait. It's got a big profile. It's a big fish bait. Don't catch a lot of small fish on this bait. If I was fishing for bites, I'd definitely go with that speed craw. But I want to try and find some tournament weighers. Funny games are over. I really love the pressure and excitement of tournaments, but it's also awesome getting out here on a pre-fishing day and just fishing and not having that pressure. I mean, I do feel some pressure. I want to find some nice fish, but I don't feel like the clock is working against me today. And on tournament days, you definitely do. Target rich environment in here, that's for sure. You could sit in here for six hours and not hit everything. There's a fish. There he is. Oh, lost him. But he was not big. He was not big, so. It's nice to get a bite though. I have part of his mouth on my hook. He tore himself free. That was not going to be a weigher. If he was, he was on the small side. So what's your philosophy on hook setting? Greg Hackney says we set the hook too quickly. He says you should really let him take it. He says that on practice days when he's not setting the hook, he has a hard time shaking fish off. My buddy Jeff and I were discussing that the other day, and he said that Gerald Swindle takes an opposite approach. He says as soon as that fish hits, it's in his mouth, so why would you wait? Of course, in classic Swindle fashion, <laughs> he's got to make it funny. He says the, the bass ain't exactly putting it in his pocket. Once he hits, it's in his mouth. But it almost seems like sometimes they have it just on the edge of their lips. Maybe they're holding the tail or the claws if you're fishing a craw or just the appendages if you're fishing a creature bait. And it takes them a few seconds to kind of suck it in deeper into their mouth. So I kind of more agree with, with Hagney, but having said that, I generally set the hook pretty quickly. It's just habit. So I've come back in this little residential pocket, hoping to find some spawners. It's a low current area, so you figure it's a great area for them to go to, to spawn in. Ooh, big bass, big bass. There he is, there he is, there he is. Oh, stay on, stay on, buddy. There we go, there we go. That's what we were looking for. Okay, that's a definite spawner that hit our stick bait. Not a monstrous fish, but for this waterway, it's definitely something I can weigh. All right, we get this fish back in the water. I don't think he's gonna bite for us again, but maybe we'll find some other ones in here. Go ahead, little guy. There you go. Now I caught that bass on the mirror lip, which is a new stick bait made by Miralore. It's a saltwater bait. 
but the bass don't know any different. Now they got some really good fish in this river. That wasn't one of them. But if you get five of those, you got a shot. Now the last tournament on this river was one with a 17 pound stringer, but that's really an anomaly. That doesn't happen often. Ooh, there's one, there's one. Oh God, he was a giant. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, he was a giant. He threw my bait. Oh God. Oh, that one hurts. That one hurts. That was a big fish. He was swimming at me the whole time. I thought he was a lot smaller than he was. Not that I would have done anything differently. He just threw it. Oof. All right, I really should get out of here. I know these fish are in here now and it's some big fish. So I think I'm gonna leave. That's a smart thing to do. <laughs> I don't want to sit in here and beat on them. I need to go find some other fish like this. I got some ideas on where to look. I can't afford to lose fish like that Sunday though. Whew. All right, I'm getting out of here. This is why you scout, trying to find something like this. Mission accomplished. So now the tournament day dilemma. I didn't catch these fish until 11. Do you go there first thing in the morning and risk messing it up and putting too much pressure back there? Or do you wait until 11? You run the risk then of somebody else being in there. I think I'm probably gonna go there first thing. Water's so pretty back here. I almost feel like if the sun was out, I'd be able to see the beds, but it's cloudy. Oh boy, that felt like a bite. That's so did that. There's a fish. There's a fish. Ugh. All right, all right, all right. Now he would be a weigher. He's definitely 11 inches, but he's just barely 11 inches. He's not gonna help me much, but he's probably the male. It is at least affirmation that we got another area where fish are biting the same pattern. I'll let this boy go. Hopefully he goes right back to that bed. All right, so we just bump one off a of bed. That's a good sign. I'm probably gonna leave. I've seen all I need to see. I'm heading home. Very happy, productive day. All right, so I can definitely say wholeheartedly, mission accomplished. I did what I set out to do today. Now look, this river receives a ton of pressure, so there are very few secrets on it. And I've fished enough tournaments to know that just because you catch something pre-fishing, doesn't mean it's gonna work out on tournament day. Somebody could spend the next five days just pounding on those fish. But at least I have something to work with for Sunday. A pattern that I hope I can repeat in other areas. I just can't wait to fish this weekend. No doubt now, I'm very, very excited. Spring has sprung in South Louisiana. Those bats are up on the beds, spawning. And man, it's just a fun time of year to fish them. Well, hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to subscribe to Marshman Masson on YouTube and give the video a thumbs up. Also, leave a comment below. What are your favorite baits to fish for bass during the spawn? And what's the biggest bass you've caught on that bait? All right, until next time, if we don't see you in the marsh, we will definitely see you right here on Marshman Masson.